talk briefly and then hopefully have some questions and dialogue and stuff like that. Um, so my main interest um, in my recent work is um, the use of like decorative painting faux techniques. Um, and I, I think um, I'm interested in those because they're kind of a, it's a um, commercial skill set um, that's also couched in a lot of um, kind of uh, traditional hand working kind of um, skill set, things like that, but also, you know, at the same time used for making signs, for um, decorating homes, uh, not really associated with like kind of high or fine art in any way. And basically what I can do with that is I, I kind of use that in two ways and it's sort of, it's different depending on whether I'm doing two-dimensional or three-dimensional work, kind of the, um, the approach that I'm taking. I think that um, with the three-dimensional work, what I'm interested in is taking like mundane objects and sort of using the application of fine finishes that imitate um, expensive substances, expensive materials to kind of like elevate them or you know create um, a dialogue between, uh, like for example with this piece here, um, the tank that would go into a portable uh, toilet um, and how like that sort of has a formal dialogue now with this like history of modernist sculpture. It's kind of like blocky, um, almost like um, Thomas More kind of um, kind of situation. Uh, so basically, what I'm doing is taking these cheap plastic Henry Moore. Yeah. <laughs> um, I knew Moore, but you know, it's like the first name. I don't know. I was, I, 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 as long as I don't say Roger Moore, I think I'm okay. I was like, yeah. was that a <laughs> The guy Moore spells it with an E, you know. Anyway, so basically, yeah, um, I'm just trying to uh, take these kind of mass-produced, generally plastic things and kind of put them through this process to create these kind of confusing, um, not easily recognizable forms that um, reference both like their original um, purpose and also kind of ambiguous modernist um, tradition of, of art. Uh, now with the two-dimensional work, what I'm more interested in is, is kind of performing a reverse operation where I take this um, skill set that is usually used to produce like fine materials, marbles, expensive woods, using those same skills to create um, sort of facsimiles of cheap, mass-produced um, building materials like you would find in the you know lumber section at Lowe's or something like that. Um, and so most of these are the woods that are depicted in these are cheap pine um, or forms of particle board. Um, and I'm trying to incorporate like the sort of labeling that you'll see, these kind of um, indecipherable like building code um, notifications and like uh, basically uh, labels that um, if you're familiar with the kind of shorthand will tell you where the wood is from and you know who made it, you know uh, how old it is and the particulars of you know what type of uh, wood it is and how it's been uh, prepared. You know there are you know, 15 different grades of white pine board that you can choose from if you're so inclined and that's what like if you see on some of these have these spray painted uh, sort of code labels and that's what those um, get into. Uh, and for my more recent stuff, like this painting here, um, I'm sort of trying to take it to another level by incorporating uh, more of a still life or a trompe l'oeil kind of effect into it. Um, and that, I guess, for me, um, is about uh, sort of really forcing that discussion between fine art painting and commercial faux painting. Um, really trying to like point out the similarities of the quality of the kind of 
images you can get, but then also there's like, you know, I think if you're attentive to it, there's also like a, um, a divide there. Like, you know, the application of paint that is used to create the wood is very much like process-based, whereas the painting of the more like traditional still life objects is a little more like nuanced kind of fine art painting, um, less of a like step one, two, three, four kind of uh, mode of working. So that's where I'm, what I'm exploring in these. And yeah, I guess that's, that's all I'm, I really have to say about that. If you guys have any questions, I would definitely be happy to answer them. I have a question for you. Um, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't notice this at first, um, but over the course of the exhibition, it really like stood out to me. Mm -hmm. You're doing something weird with space in um, oh, kind yeah. of like your second, when you talk about your second, the 2D right. series, where you're like flattening objects. Mm -hmm. Um, can you talk a bit about that? I, it's really noticeable in um, like these two pieces here on the right. Yeah, there's no perspective um, okay. in those, and that's for a couple of reasons. I think the chief reason is that because I'm interested in the kind of like world of these um, like mass-produced building materials, and they're all governed by these numbers, you know, two by four, you know one by three, you know, you have panels that are, you know, 96 by 48 by three quarter inches. I was really interested in keeping that universal throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then also the other kind of thing that I'm interested in is this kind of like, uh, this world in which they exist that's kind of, it's like blank, like space. And um, if you, I mean, part of that for me is like this, this sort of, nondescript like nowhere world which is also the same place that you'll find in like digital um, like 3D modeling programs and things like that and a lot of those operate without the use of perspective um, in like the actual modeling uh, process itself so that's another reason for that. <clears throat> want to stay true to the geometry because that seems like a very important very important distinction. I didn't notice it at first but it like there was just like something that I couldn't quite put my finger on, and that's what it was. Do you um, do you have any experience in sort of like a contracting environment? Yeah, well, I work for uh, um, my, my my real job. I work for a uh, company that does theming. Okay. So we do all types of building from you know, more contracting to more carpentry, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, scenic painting, like murals and faux finishing. Okay, because I was just going to say, um, it's definitely like, I guess it comes out when I look at this, because it almost seems like these are like snapshots of, like let's say, a structure being built. You yeah. Just like focused on joints or like the working table. Like I, I just like, when I saw that I, I envisioned, envisioned sort of like a whole room Mm -hmm. I guess as like an installation, but having these sort of false images of real things in the place of what those real things would be. Yeah, I mean, I've done like installation around like that before, and these were definitely very much like considered to be like potential pieces of a whole. Okay. Not that I'm really that interested in what the whole is, but I like those little intersections of like if you go to I keep bringing up like Lowe's and Home Depot, yeah. but if you go there, they have little diagrams of all the different, you know, brackets and things and how they join together. And I'm kind of interested in that. It's almost more of like a, it's kind of the um, medical illustration version of yeah. like carpentry. Yeah, like that. So, like a digital model program mm -hmm. that you contractors who sort of mock up the yeah. software like that. So. Yeah, a lot of those tools have like ready-made like types of joints too, and you know, sort of it's like I want to do, you know, I want to hang a joist, just, yeah. and like you see, there's some stuff that sort of evokes that that same kind of. It's a mass-produced building technique as well. So in addition to like talking about the materials themselves, like the way in which they're used, it's very much about mass production. Um, you know, building you know frame houses and things like that. It's a very sort of almost like factory-like process. So I'm interested in, you know, using the 
exploring the cheap materials and the way they've been configured in like the cheapest possible. You know, there's no like dovetail joining or anything like that. Any other questions? Have you ever thought of um, like the idea of building these uh, these images like simulacrum, like mm -hmm. making an actual object and then painting the wood grain on something that would look like it's actually a physical piece of wood? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's occurred to me. I think that with the wood, I, I guess I'm more interested in it as a the sort of trans transmitted onto like the two dimensions. I think that you know if I wanted to have a bunch of like a cheap wood structure, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily buy a bunch of nice stuff and make it up to look like cheap wood. I think that um, the name of the artist escapes me, but there is um, a sculptor who does very similar work who like makes pallets out of like mahogany and like makes ladders out of like really fine like oak and things like that. So I don't know if I'm interested in going in that direction. Um, though I do, I am interested in like things like this where I am sort of uh, taking like pre-made structures and, and then converting them over. So that's something that, that I am you know, potentially exploring like smaller things, ways to um, <coughs> bring that, you know, do versions of this, but you know, maybe starting to explore a bit with the wood green and stuff as well too. Uh, do you find that your work has a lot of humor in it? Because I mean, I try to, I mean, I think it's kind of inherently, like, faux, I think, is kind of like an inherently yeah. humorous medium. I mean, it's like, the, the, even the places where you see it done, like, not as, like, an, you know, like, in architecture and things like that yeah. tend to be a little bit ridiculous, like, people's, like, awful homes, like, with, like, giant marble facades that, like, are totally architecturally impossible, but you know, it's all about like vanity and things like that, which are kind of humorous concepts. So yeah, I think that, I mean, obviously over there it's like a little, yeah, it's like my little joke piece. That sounds out. And then of course these pictures are painted on paper, right. and the paper is mounted on wood. Yeah. And yeah. so it, there seems to be like a little bit of a joke there. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to keep it, you know, not that into gravitas really. Yeah. I like to I like to show the the backside of, of things too, you know, like with the wood over there. It's like I think the kind of like the flip side, the the back of the canvas, the kind of ugly part that like yeah. holds it all together and makes it work is it's good to show. Or even holds the building together. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Great. Are there any other questions? Cool. Thanks so much.